In today's video, we will be going over installing the Go client for use with GridDB. So installing this would mean you can now use the Go language to interface with your GridDB cluster instead of using the default Java. So first we'll actually install some prereqs, which includes the GridDB C client. And then from there, we will install and set up everything so that you can use Golang with your cluster. Okay, so first thing we need to do is grab the GridDB C client from GitHub. So let's do that. Um, so I got to this page just by searching for GridDB in GitHub. Uh, so we'll grab the C client. Um, so now they have an RPM available to download. They also have a Debian file, so depending on your OS, obviously. So let's just do this in the um, command line. Okay, and then it should be here. So install like this already installed obviously um, so when when we install the RPM it should go into our user directory here so you can see it's um, here the C client okay perfect okay so next we'll grab the actual go client itself which I believe also has some prereqs but we'll check the github page and make sure so we'll just go back a couple and find the go client um, we can also download via command line. Um, but if you look at the um, GitHub page itself, there's some prereqs which we will get. So first let's just um, install this and then we can uh, worry about that other stuff. Okay. Great. Okay, so next we're going to install the prereq for the Go client. So I'm just going to copy and paste the commands I see on GitHub. So you can do the same. Looks like, actually, first let me switch to the um, root user because there are going to be some make commands that we need to be root for. Okay. So first we'll do PCRE, then we'll get swig. I need to untar this. Okay, great. Okay, next we'll grab swig itself. So once again, copying the commands from GitHub. On tar. So this is some issue I've never encountered before. Um, I've built this Go client several times over several machines. I've never seen this. So as you saw, I just installed PCRE, and now it's saying that it can't find it, that it's not installed. So I noticed here that it shows um, that they have a PCRE build script available with this tar ball that we um, unzipped. So, um, we can try to run that and see so hopefully this should do the trick Maybe. Okay, so it looks fine. So normally you probably can just follow the commands on GitHub, but if you run into the same issue I did, uh, I guess that fixed it. So, all right, so last couple of steps will be to actually make the Go client itself. So, first we need to set some environment paths. Um, so, first we need to point our library path 
to where the C client is installed because as mentioned that's a prereq. So let me do that first. So um, this is a path where it was installed if you installed via RPM. So we'll do that and then we'll also set the C go check to one which means to disable it. So by default it's set to one when you install go. This was just going to disable it. Um, this will not allow the Go client to work at all. Um, there's a link in the blog version of this video that you can read about to see what exactly the Seago check does. Okay, so last we will make the Go client. So let's go there. I think it's just make. Okay, so um, if you get the same error that I got, it's probably because you built PCRE using that script from earlier. So I realized that we didn't actually make Swig post making PCR. So you would have to run the configure um, command from Swig and then you'd have to make and then make install. And then you'd have to have the Swig file created here. And then I also um, added um, this directory to my path so I can use Swig from anywhere. So um, for example, like this. So presumably now, if I go to the Go client, it should make. Okay, so I believe this error is because I didn't set the paths correctly yet. So this is a good thing. So I'm showing you what not to do, right? So I believe we need to set um, the LD library path and the library path to point to the GridDBC client because that is a prereq as mentioned before. So I will do this. I, am, I will actually remove this portion. You shouldn't, but I will because um, I've done this many times already. So I want to just make sure that the path is simple. Um, and then I will also do the, just a regular library path. Okay, and then I also need to set the Go path needs to point to the Go client itself. So I believe that's why this error is cropping up because Go doesn't know that this um, Go client exists yet. So if you look at your Go environment, right now I have it pointed here, but I realize this is wrong. So I need to export Go path and I need it to do home. So this is the standard um, go installation and then the the location of the go client is in here i've missed the intro go link directory in my initial haste so i believe that should be good. So now we're made clean and this should hopefully finally build properly. Terrific. So if you look now, um, there is this um, .so file and some other stuff. So that proves it was finally built properly. All right, of course, the very last step is to make sure that the Go client, even though it's built, we gotta make sure that it actually runs and we can run Golang code with our cluster. So um, on this machine, I have just a one node cluster, um, strictly for video purposes, obviously. So um, actually, the Go client tarball we downloaded earlier comes with some sample code. <clears throat> so that's the easiest way to verify um, if it's running. So we'll build a binary here. Whoops, let's try uh, number one. So if you build it, that mean, at least means you've got everything connected and ready to go. So let's just take a look first. Um, so this is how you import the Go client into your code. And this here is uh, the credentials you enter. So uh, the sample code has it as a command line argument. So we'll enter that as we run the command. And then this is just, um, this is what a container looks like. So it's a map string interface. Um, so interfa uh, empty interface is just any type. And then this is a, um, an array of an array of uh, empty interface, which is of any type. So 
yeah, it's pretty ugly, but that's how it looks. Okay, so um, we'll just go ahead and try to run this. So, um, sample one, we run the binary we just built. Oh, actually, let me show you. So, um, yeah, so now there's a binary built here. So, sample one. Um, so, I believe first you need to do um, this, and then you need to do the uh, notification address, and then the cluster name, default cluster, and then username and password. So I believe this code will insert data, yeah, and then print it out. So this is the same sample code for all the different client libraries. So that works, so that's good. So now we know we are able to run our favorite language, Golang, with our favorite database, GridDB. Perfect. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, you can gather all the information and uh, essentials down in the description below. Thank you very much.